welcome. Tonight we will learn some of the principles of Tantra and some practices. Uh, so you go away with things, you can start practicing later tonight. Are any of you couples? Can you raise a hand? All singles? Well, there go the couples practices. I'm Charles Muir. I was counting on my fingers. I started my first yoga class, 1966, here in New York City at what was called the Hotel Diplomat on 6th Avenue and 43rd Street. It's gone now. Uh, with a, a Western teacher, Richard Hittleman, who was a householder, and he was one of only a couple of teachers of yoga that I studied with who spoke about sex. Christy, my wife of eight years, we have an anniversary coming in about 10 days, uh, has had a crash course for 10 years with me. So I want to introduce her and let you let her speak to you and she'll introduce me. We've never done that before, <laughs> but new things are always good. Yes. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Christy or Christy Rose. Either one of them work. And as Charles said, we've been married for uh, almost eight years and we've been together for almost 10. So um, I had just kind of started uh, exploring and looking into what Tantra was when I, I met him. Uh, <laughs> we won't go into the story of how we met right now, but um, he diving into relationship with him has given me the opportunity to really practice in depth, um, not just the techniques of Tantra, but the whole, uh, the whole package of what it means to be deeply in relationship deep in love, have commitments, relationship agreements, be together over a period of time. As we know, relationships change over time. And how does our practice evolve and develop and morph as we do as a couple? So um, I am excited that this weekend, if any of you get to join us, and, and even tonight, the things that we'll share with you, I'll share from the experiences that I've had the opportunity to um, yeah, to have in these 10 years with this really wonderful, unique man whom I love so much and who has taught me a lot about all kinds of love. Um, yeah, I guess that's where I'll start. <laughs> 10 years. You know, I had a 20 year marriage with Caroline Muir, who uh, has retired this last year living in Panama. And uh, we wrote the book, the first Tantra book. We were racing with Margot Anand, our publisher and her publisher. And we got out the art of conscious loving first. I wanna backtrack to when I first started yoga because I, back in the sixties, the word got out in India that business was real good here in America. And these marvelous swamis came to America. And uh, I spent a lot of time visiting and living at Ananda Ashram up in Harriman, New York, where these teachers would come, these aged men that were flexible like a piece of rubber at 80, 70, and they looked like they were 30. And it fascinated me. But none of them talked about sex. It was all about consciousness, awakening consciousness. When I questioned them about Tantra, I remember Swami Sachidananda saying, no, we do not talk about that here. That is the black sheep of yoga. That was all. All of these Swamis, like most yogis, believe that sexual energy was the energy to awaken for enlightenment, the highest creative energy. And therefore it should not be squandered. One should be brahmacharya or celibate. And I tried that for, I think two weeks. 
uh, during my 75 years, 75 plus, Richard Hittleman, my teacher in New York at my first in-person class, he was a householder. He had a couple of children. And uh, when I won the lottery back in 1974, I moved out to California to be close to him. And I got to have heart-to-heart -heart talks about, what about Tantra? And he said, well, you know, Brahmachari is recommended to conserve this energy for your meditation and your awakening, your enlightenment, your awakening of consciousness until you are enlightened. And Tantra was the only yoga in the hundreds of schools of yoga that said, yes, that's true. But when two people join their sexual energy together, and bring their body in the closest proximity and do practices of connection where the sexual energy is not lost, but increased through the practice with your partner. That doesn't mean you walk around horny all the time. It means you have more of this energy to create your life, to put into your meditation, to put into your relationship, and to have more of this energy that a couple can build up a bond between their magnetic fields. And we are electric, we are energy. And so the practices of Tantra take the two and do practices to create one. So you feel closer to your partner, you feel more intimate, more at one with them from practicing the art of love. And it is an art form. It's a skill you get better at better. To desire to be the best lover you can be makes you a candidate for our Tantra school, the art of conscious loving. I wanna get better at giving love and pleasure to my partner or partners so that through the sharing, through the practices that we'll outline and practice a few in a little while, the two people feel close. When they finish their lovemaking practice, they come away feeling, oh, I feel you so deeply. I love you so deeply. Now the practices are not so esoteric but they take simple practices like hugging, we call it embrace, standing, sitting, lying. Movement, how you move your pelvis, how you move your second chakra, how you create the energetic harmony between positive and negative energy that partners have and share with each other, how you unite those energies and how you grow more and more in love, not just in your relationship with partner, but your relationship with self and your relationship with the world. It takes an ability to quiet the everyday thinking mind, techniques that enable you to stop the stream of your thoughts and bring the left and right hemisphere of the brain into balance. The logical thinking side, the intuitive feeling side, both parts of the brain are important. To unite the two parts of the brain in lovemaking so that as you share with your partner, you're not thinking, you're not daydreaming, you're not planning, what technique should I do next? But totally present, a mind that's not wandering, thinking, daydreaming, totally present for love that you co-create. So you take something like embrace or touch. We all do that in sex. But Tantra is not about sex, it's about sexual love. 
where the goal is in an orgasm, the goal is ananda or bliss. To experience bliss in your body, in your mind, in your emotion, connected all the way down to spirit. So as you embrace, you want to do techniques that cause a magnetic connection. And often couples that come together to have sex, they're in a state of repulsion. One of them has been watching Rambo on television and the other one's been watering the plants or the garden, trimming the flowers, I don't know but you're in different spaces, different emotions, different energies. So you do practices that create the magnetic connection. So when you embrace, you don't just embrace, you're touching in your body, but you also do techniques of touch, of contact, to run a circuit of energy through your partner. Love is an emotion but love is also an energy. Save the emotions for the ones you love, the energy of love, put it out in the world in ways that it can be recognized and received with your family, with your children. I don't know if any of you had parents that modeled a healthy sexual relationship. I just spent the last four days with my 81 year old brother and his wife. They've been married 60 years next week. And they're like the battling Bickersons, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. They took my course last year when I was in New York. My brother knew nothing of what his younger brother did. I hoped it would change their lives, but I'm sad to report they, uh, they're still battling. They learned things, but they didn't practice them. And Tantra is practices. If you're not practicing the art of love, <laughs> if you're just reading books about it or watching films about it, it doesn't help you. You must take the techniques and practice them and implement them in your life. Yeah. <laughs> So what we're really talking about here is becoming conscious in a realm that most of us have been trained into unconsciousness around, whether we got some sort of overt uh, imprinting from our family or our culture or our religion, often that imprinting was something negative, or there were really strong do's and don'ts, good and bads, right and wrongs, and it left us either feeling confused, restrained, restricted, guilt, shame, fear, confusion, all of those feelings often permeate our experience of relationship, love, sexuality, and even our orgasms. And so this practice gives us a way to take all of that and bring intention into it. We bring focus. We bring practices that help to take what could be chaotic energy, sometimes desire and lust, and sort of just closing our eyes and jumping into a sexual experience or hoping for the best in a relationship, not really having skills or insight as to how to improve what we experience, with these practices, with this modality that Charles created all these years ago, we actually mold the energy. We take something that is pure potential and we imprint it with something that we actually want to experience, starting with this concept of love, that the whole purpose of this experience that we want to share with our partner is to share love, to increase love, to empower ourselves to feel more love in our lives. And for so many people, because we're going into it blind, we're going into it, bringing the baggage of our conditioning, we don't experience that. And for a lot of couples over the time, over the years that they're together, they're 
willingness, their interest in connecting, and also the enjoyment of their sexual and, and, and intimacy in their relationship, it diminishes. Well, with this practice and some of the tools that you can learn, you can actually increase those things over time. And rather than having randomness or disappointment in your sexual sharing and your intimacy with your partner, you can have something that is, uh, it's, it's uh, exponentially uh, grows, it grows, it's enhanced, it increases over time. Let's come back to an embrace, a hug, standing, lying, cross-legged, yuganata, yab yab, any position. The two each have a magnetic charge and you're doing practices to increase the magnet, the connection of two magnets, attraction. And once you're connected, once you have your bodies aligned, comfortable, you take it to the next level. Let's breathe together. At our course, you'll learn four different breathing techniques you can do with a partner. During lovemaking as solo practices, we'll do a couple of them this evening. And you use your hands. When you hug someone, you wrap your arms around them, right? Maybe you tap them on the back or something. We wanna do practices to increase the energetic flow between the two people. And the two hands have different energies. When you place your right hand on one part of your partner's body, you don't just want to be touching them one-handed, but create a circuit. So if I were going to caress Christie's lovely breast, I wouldn't go right for the breast. I would start with stillness. When you're going to connect with someone and touch them, don't start groping. Start with stillness and complete the circuit by putting the other hand on the front or back of the chakra regions. And by breathing slowly, you increase the magnetism between you and your partner. Now you're ready to start making love. You've created harmony between the two people. You've synchronized breathing. Breathing is a source of energy. And one of the primary ways we transmit energy through the seven energy centers, the chakras. This is New York. I'm assuming you know what a chakra is, but I'll define it in a few words. Reservoirs and generators of energy and consciousness. Much of the energy and consciousness is asleep. And through the practices of Tantra, you awaken the sleeping energy and you grow more conscious. If you're more conscious, you can feel things on a deeper level. A touch just is in nerve endings to nerve endings, skin to skin. It's, whoa, I can penetrate you deeply with my energy. I can open to your energy without fear. Oh, so you've got an embrace, a hug happening. You've placed your hands on two chakras, both on the back or one on the front and one on the back. It makes no, no difference. And you start breathing in harmony together. Usually our breathing is shallow. By deepening the breath, you quiet the busy thinking mind. That's our biggest sex organ. It can be our friend, it can be our worst enemy. And we focus that mind on taking the love that's in here and learning to put it out better. But equally important is learning to open and take the energy in from your partner. Often couples, one of the partners is a great giver but doesn't know how to receive. Knows how to take pleasure, but not to just receive pleasure. Mm. You gotta be good at both of these art forms. The art of receiving, the art of giving. 
we use touch to awaken nerve bundles. Interestingly enough, the erogenous zones are all chakra, front and back. They're all erogenous zones. We can access energy. We can stimulate the nerve endings to send a message from our down there up to our brain, to the limbic system. And through practices known as mudras, mudras are hand, finger, or body positions that profoundly influence energy. We send the energy from the limbic system to new parts of the brain that have not been colored by the past, by conditioning, by trauma, by other experiences. There's so much brain power to awaken. It starts down in the lower chakras, we awaken it, but we're trying to bring it to the back center of the brain where the most pure consciousness is asleep. And that enables us to feel more. There's pleasure. You've all felt pleasure. You like pleasure. Pleasure is a wonderful thing. It's healthy. There's intense pleasure. That can get scary for some people because it involves losing control and surrendering to the energy and the pleasure that's coursing through you. As you wake in consciousness, you feel more. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going way beyond ordinary sex here. This is the more to sex that we all have kind of intuitively thought should be there, but hardly any of us get any education or direction and how to get there. And what happens when we start practicing uh, modalities like this is that we broaden and we deepen our repertoire and our experience of what's possible when we're connecting with a partner. So we're not just aiming towards trying to get off or get our partner off. We're really uh, learning, as Charles said, how to give and receive very deeply, how to bring signals from other parts of our body up to our brain and back. We learn not only to stimulate our partner erotically, but we learn to touch them in ways that nurture them. We can actually help them to move blocked energy from certain parts of their bodies to others and bring more flow to their entire being. So the goal of coming together is literally to join in this beautiful practice of union of breathing, touching, looking deeply into the other and moving our energy. And every single time that we come together in our practice and you'll find as you deepen your practice, it's entirely different. It's mm -hmm. a surprise. We don't quite know where we're gonna go, but we know it's gonna be beautiful. So energy comes out our hands. At our very first class, we'll teach you about energy so it's not a concept that you believe in or not, but that you actually can feel and thereby transmit it to the other. Nerve endings in the fingers. We want to touch consciously. We're not groping. We're not taking. We want to go to the areas where the most nerve endings are, these chakra regions, and we want to touch consciously with great variety. The types of touch, well, I mentioned the one we always start with. Do you remember it? Stillness. Let your hands be still, take a few breaths together. And then come to the nerve bundles, come to the erogenous zones, come to the chakra regions and begin to touch from stillness, the second modality of touch, is caress, moving touch. And I don't mean just up and down, sideways, zigzags. You're moving energy as you touch your partner. You're celebrating with these nerve endings, activating these nerve endings. Oh, the delight in the feeling of skin, the softness. 
and the creaminess, working your way to where the most nerve endings are on the breast. Where is that? The nipples. <laughs> you don't go right for the nipples. I was in relationship three years with my first girlfriend before she said, I hate the way you touch my breasts. <laughs> High school. Oh, you're supposed to like it? <laughs> I thought they were mine. <laughs> you want to work your way to the nipple. You want to celebrate around the nipple. You want to give the woman a sense of anticipation. You don't go right to the nipple, twist it three times to the left, twice to the right, like a safe cracker and pull on it. You want to awaken the nerve endings that are asleep and the energy that's asleep. Get that nipple hard by not touching it directly, but going around it. Energy leaves from the pads of the fingers, the palm of the hand, and the heel of the hand. So as you caress your beloved, Sometimes you touch with the fingers, sometimes only one finger, sometimes several, sometimes all of them. Sometimes just the palm, it's a whole different energy and experience. Sometimes the heel, sometimes a combination of those. Wow, that's like five types of touch right there. Mm -hmm. Caress, moving the energy from below to above. So you know what to do with the clitoris. And maybe you know what to do with the sacred spot. Maybe you don't know the difference between the sacred spot and the G spot. Ask a question a little later and I'll tell you the difference. <laughs> maybe you know how to activate it, changing the speed, the pressure, the type of stroke. You know the this stroke, you know to the clitoris, this stroke, soft, gentle, slow. But you wanna give variety. Stay with one a while on an area, paint like your finger painting, paint the energy. Mm -hmm. And always present. Mm -hmm. Oh, I can have pleasure and delight from giving pleasure but also in celebrating bringing your partner into their body. Because when you first come together, you're not really in your body, you're probably in your head. So the initial practices of embrace and touch bring the person into their body. The breathing together quiets the busy mind so it can feel more deeply. Pleasure. But deeper than pleasure is energy flow, current. We want to run currents from the chakras below upward. We want to connect the down there with the up here. And that's why the tantric meditations and learning how to have a meditative mind. Because we're used to our mind running wherever it wants to run thinking whatever thought it wants to think, not always to your great benefit, because the mind can worry. There are parts of the brain, the amygdala, that have been built in to worry. And sometimes we come to bed insecure and does she want me to touch? Will she respond to my touch? Will he be present? Will he be intimate with me? Or will he just use me to get off? So we need to quiet the mind and remember this is a meditation, this love making. Interesting term, love making. Doing practices to make love come from in you out, to fill you and to enable you to delight your partner filling her, to resensitize areas that have gone numb. I'll give you an area that's gone numb. Your penis. <laughs> Poor penis. You've choked it near to death. 
if you survive circumcision, you now have 4,000 nerve endings. You started with the four head of the penis that has 16,000 nerve endings. And after circumcision in adulthood, you have about 4,000, but we numb them out. In our goal to experience a five second orgasm, that's all it is. And unless you learn to increase its breadth and depth and length, because you can influence how long your orgasms go. Mm. Mm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll go on. No, I was going to speak to the ladies because not only are we going to get a partner who is way more present, who knows how to slow down and let go of his goal orientation around our body, let go of what he thinks he knows about how to give us pleasure or what he's seen in a video or anything like that. But we're also going to get a man who has the willingness to learn to prolong and extend his pleasure. And we have the opportunity, ladies, to learn how to join him in that to actually, uh, what do I want to say? As much as we want our men to slow down and touch us differently, we have also been conditioned, ladies, to think of ourselves as successful lovers when we can get the man to that ejaculation that Charles was just describing. There's so much conditioning to think that once we can make him come, not only have we been a successful lover, but we know when the sex is over. And sometimes if we've had a lifetime of, let's just say, sort of disappointing sex, that experience of successfully getting the man to ejaculation means, whew, that's over for now. But when we have more skill, when we have more presence, when we have clearer intention, when we join with each other in the bedroom, we want things to last longer. And so not only do we want our men to learn how to touch us better, we want to learn how to touch them better. And we want to reach through their physicality to their energy. We want to make contact with their heart and actually help them to bring more of their, their love and their emotion into the experience and join this heart chakra with this throbbing sexual chakra, the sacral chakra, which is usually their favorite one. It's where all the energy goes. It's where both of our minds tend to go in a lovemaking session, but we wanna to try to start bringing that energy up and making a bridge between his wand and his heart. And what we get is a man who is so present and he's so tender in his passion. and. My man has these big, beautiful blue eyes. And when he looks at me with his presence and our lovemaking, it is the most beautiful and satisfying experience uh, of my sexual life. Mm. <laughs> Let's get back to your penis, which I'm proposing could be more alive. Those 4,000 nerve endings aren't all firing. In our course, we teach women how to be a sexual healer and awakening, to resensitize that poor penis that's been squeezed and choked <laughs> since you were 12. And every time you ejaculate, do you know how many sperm cells leave your penis when you ejaculate? Do you have a, can you guess? Because each one of those sperm cells is life force, is energy. And it seems like we have a chakra that perpetually renews itself. And it does when you're younger. But 200 to 300 million sperm cells, every ejaculation goes out of you. Now let's count how many times you've ejaculated in the first year. <laughs> Yeah, and how long have you been doing it? Same old, same old. With a goal, the goal is to come. But women, what happens after the man comes? <laughs> they should call it going. Yeah, we kind of lose them. 
<laughs> the energetic connection you've built up in whatever the sex has been, immediately the magnets disconnect when the man releases his energy. What if he could experience orgasms, the movement of energy in the body, in a different way, instead of ejaculation, injaculation, where instead of your energy going out, it's, made, it's charged up and made to come inward and upward. Wow, that's pleasure that can be so much bigger than a five second, uh, uh, I don't know, how do you sound like it? <laughs> I've taught seminars where there's like 16 rooms and people making love and I walk around, make sure everyone's practicing. And some of those sounds are pathetic. <laughs> and women sounds. Women make more sounds eating dessert than they do in their orgasms often. Orgasm power runs with the breath. Now here's a technique that I'll tell you and maybe you'll practice it tonight with yourself to use your willpower, your mind and your breath to make the orgasm last longer. How long did I say was the average male orgasm? Does anyone remember? Five seconds. It goes up in a wave. For about two seconds, you're not ejaculating, you're just orgasming. And then you reach the peak. The fluid and the sperm mix. And for two and a half seconds, you're in orgasm, but it's a... Once you reach the peak, it immediately goes down and there's your three seconds or five seconds, or maybe you're blessed 10 seconds. What if your orgasm could last 10 breaths and you learned how to breathe in for 15 seconds and hold the breath and breathe out for 15 seconds? For as long as you breathe in, if you hit the wave, I'm coming, you actually know, here it is, it's starting. You hit it with your slowest, deepest breath. And for as long as you can breathe in, average person starts, they can breathe in 10 seconds. The energy is still going up. I'm coming is twice as long as a normal orgasm. And that's just the in-breath. Same for you, women. Not, I'm going to come soon. It's a different type of breathing we use. But when you're actually in the orgasm, it's like you're trying to suck it up from your down there. There are those nerve endings firing. There's energy. Your orgasm is probably your closest experience to pure energy. There it is. Let me breathe in. There's about 10. Whoa. This is a big one. And instead of letting the energy just go down the side of the mountain, the other side, we make a sound. We use our breath, we've in breath, we've pulled energy up, we've increased the length, and now we're gonna open our throat center and make a sound. Now, if you got thin walls or your mother is living in the back bedroom or the kids, oh, I don't want to make a sound. I don't make sounds. You take a pillow. You put it over your mouth, the person having the orgasm, and you let her rip. Ah! <laughs> for as long as you make sound one sound one long the breath comes out with the sound you don't go down the mountain you don't approach i'm done you stay on the ridge line of the mountain i'm still coming now you've had a 30 second orgasm you run out of breath Check in down there. I'm still feeling the energy. It still feels good. Let me take another breath. Let me dip in and pull it up like I'm sipping a straw up to my brain. 
And maybe there's another sound and another sound. Can you imagine 14 breaths of orgasm? Oh, he gets very cute. It's true. <laughs> After such an mind blowing. And so women need to learn how to touch the lingam, which is the Sanskrit word for the penis. Lingam means organ of light, organ of God. Wand of God. Wand of light. <laughs> it ain't just a dick. Dicks and pricks are pretty unconscious. Mm. A lingam is conscious. Mm. And a man can learn to use that lingam to massage and awaken the inside of the woman's yoni. Yoni means sacred space. And women have to own, ah, this is not just a, a pussy or a cunt. God created this, the same God that created your heart center and your brain centers created your second chakra. Mm -hmm. So let me see if I get this right. The secret to a higher, longer orgasm is to go into the wave, I'm coming, breathing in, imagining, feeling, or visualizing, sucking up the pleasure to your brain, opening your throat and giving it a sound. And when you run out of breath and you can't make any more sound, you take in another breath. And often that starts the second wave. So big waves and multiple waves of orgasm are possible for a man if he's willing to learn to surrender to the woman being his healer and awakener, to resensitize the nerve endings in the penis that have gone numb from banging away and jerking away to have a five second experience that relaxes you. Well, that's nice and was pleasurable. And it's been my goal my whole life to have orgasms when it comes to sex. If I don't have an orgasm, it's not good sex. Not so. Because if you do this breathing technique, you can have wave after wave blissful pleasure, not just pleasure, not just intense pleasure, but a pleasure that transforms the ordinary mind and you have an experience of bliss. And you're not tired after such an experience, you're revitalized. You look 10 years younger. So men are gonna sensitize and reawaken the yoni that's experienced penises like a battering ram, jackhammer sex, probably all their life if they haven't had conscious lovers, mm -hmm. to reawaken. Now, you know you have 8,000 nerve endings in the clitoris. And the clitoris is more than just the tip where those 8,000 live. We want to get the clitoris engorged. We want to touch it in new ways. We want to be slow and sensitive. And the woman, while she's being given to, it's a breathing exercise. Can you feel loved? Mm. I love you. Mm. Here, feel. Feel what you're feeling. I'm with you. Mm. Women get frustrated when they get close to coming, <laughs> but for some reason that darn Yoni doesn't come you get to oh i could come through oh oh and then your computer crashes the energy crash i was gonna come but where did my energy go often it goes away because you stop breathing back to the breath connect your breaths connect the inhale with the exhalation and don't make orgasm the goal Love is the goal and arousal. Arousal? Yeah, get off on the excitement. Enjoy the journey to where you want to go. Because just being aroused for an extended period can be very revitalizing, very pleasurable, very satisfying. <laughs> yes. <laughs> 
So going back to the men and what Charles was talking about, one of the things that happens when the wand, this, this beautiful lingam, and I want to encourage you women to start to retrain yourselves in your own minds to imagine relating to this part of a man's anatomy, whether he is or not, as a wand of light or a wand of God. And I want you to see if you can start to bring some of your heart energy and reverence into your hands when you touch him. And as you learn how to touch him, which is something that we're going to go over on Sunday afternoon of the weekend we're going to teach, you're also going to be helping him to expand his pleasure thresholds. So Charles was talking about getting to this waterfall that's, I'm coming, and it's a place that most men know very well. But there's a whole river of pleasure here that a lot of people are missing out on, us women as well. But for a lot of men, they'll get into the river at about a one. And they'll start floating down this river towards their orgasm. And somewhere around a three, they might skip to like a seven or an eight, and then they slip over the edge of the waterfall. And so there's this whole range of pleasure that they're completely missing out on. And they're also missing out on the ability to slowly allow their arousal and pleasure to swell so that they can enjoy the ride and cover more of these numbers and even back up a little bit and hang out here a little and then, oh, approach the edge and then use a technique and come back and then ride the river again before they go over and potentially have that depleting experience where they wanna fall asleep and then the magnetism sort of dissipates and we lose them for a little while. They go over the waterfall, it's a long way back for the man to have the chakra recharged so he can be sexual again. What if we could harness that energy and use it to awaken and regenerate all of the other chakras, all of the organs of your body? It becomes a practice, lovemaking, of youthening. Mm -hmm of lengthening not just one's span of life, but one's liveliness. So I'm 75 plus now. Christy's 42. Yeah. <laughs> and our anniversary is March 29th, I remember. <laughs> Good job. Cold start, <laughs> Where was I? Youthening. Youthening. I was always impressed by these old yogis that looked so young. Now they were celibate, or at least were supposed to be. I think there were seven of my teachers that get busted for having sex with their female disciples. Uh, it's not just in the Catholic church. To have a practice that allows you to charge up your life force. Some of the time, not every time you have sex, but some of the times you make love where the goal isn't to ejaculate, but to enjoy the journey of arousal. And the woman becomes your healer and your awakener. That's different than just sex or she gives you a hand job or some other job. Not a job divine play and the man works on can I be present can I take in this love can I feel my down there pleasure my arousal and fill myself with it so it's not not just happening in the tip of your penis where you got maybe a thousand nerve endings alive still but very quickly in a matter of months you can reactivate those nerve endings that have been numbed out and emotionally numbed out, not just physically. Do you feel loved when you have sex? That's a question you gotta ask yourself. Mm. Do I feel closer or distant? Mm. Do I feel uplifted and elevated or eh? Same old, same old. Every time you make love, it's an adventure and it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. And if you learn to just appreciate arousal in lovemaking, rather than worry about I'm not getting to the end of it, 
it's a delight. And it's a practice. Couples make it a practice. Let's love each other every day. Doesn't mean let's have sex every day, but let's get the sexual energy moving and let's be present with one another and let's harmonize with one another. Can you just be satisfied by 30 minutes of arousal and pleasure? Would that be satisfying? I don't mean 30 minutes of struggling to have an orgasm. I mean, enjoying the journey. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Ah. I want to go back to Yonis. Yes. Because we talked about the women learning to touch men in a new way, where the men practice, I'm just going to receive and be present and breathe and hopefully feel loved and arousal. The men need to learn to touch the second chakra of the woman in new and wonderful ways. And it's such a mysterious thing, the yoni of the woman. It's mysterious to her, too. It's mysterious to many of us as well, but the mystery is part of the beauty and the magic. And so the clitoris, with its 8,000 nerve endings, goes up a neural pathway called the pudental nerve. And it goes up to the brain, to the limbic system. And the limbic system, follow me if you can, speaks to other files, if this is a computer, all the files of having to do with sex and love, including the traumas, including the numbness, including the misinformation that you got when you were a kid and still believe in, the misinformation the church has given you. I just heard that the Pope is now talking about allowing priests to marry. Does that mean they get to have sex? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> so to touch the Yoni, to learn about where are the nerve endings, how to stimulate them, and how to make them move up to the brain. Now there's another neural pathway, the pelvic nerve accessed from the second chakra of the woman from inside. This is the area of the sacred spot, Yoni Nadi, it's called in tantric writings. Yoni Nadi, the pathway of the Yoni to the brain, to the crown chakra to awaken consciousness. And we learn not just where the sacred spot is, but that it's an access to energy. And the pelvic nerve happens to go to the right hemisphere of the brain. Remember, we have two brains, feeling, emotional-based, logical-based thinking. Well, we quiet that part of the brain, the thinker. We activate the feeling part. And by stimulating this part of the woman's yoni, not just poking away, looking for a spot, it's not like the clitoris, the sacred spot, it's an area. And after stimulating it with sophistication, with variety, varied pressures and speeds, different types of strokes, for instance, this little tiny area, you'll learn eight different strokes in our Saturday class of how to awaken the sacred spot. It's why this type of stimulation is such an emotional experience for women, sacred spot massage, often moving them to tears, often dredging up stuff from the subconscious that can be worked through in the field, in the delightful, exchange of love to wash away the trauma so it doesn't hold you back to banish from your yoni the ghost of husband's past or boyfriend's past past get out of my yoni i will not let you hold me back anymore mm. what a quest that is mm. to no longer let the men that have shut you down or wounded you your heart and perhaps your yoni you cannot hold me back anymore. I claim my yoni for me. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh -huh. And God created it and it's good. Mm. And the pleasure you're now feeling is tiny 
compared to the potential. I don't care how alive you are, if you're having multiple orgasms and ejaculating, and that's all within the potential of every woman. How big can big be? Mm. Not just in pleasure, but how big can love be? Mm. And how big can the feeling of energy be? Mm. Wow. Mm -hmm. And it's an awakening process, this sacred spot. Mm -hmm. Yes. Let's well take a said. look at the time and see where we are. No. You're going to share? I'm going to share. <laughs> We're going to share about the workshop now. <laughs> Let me see if I, I've reached a... Well, you know, there are positions of love making and different positions channel energy and affect the chakras differently. And we teach the classic positions of love making, and each position can increase the energy. It doesn't mean you bounce from one position to the next and you're trying to get 108 different positions in, <laughs> <laughs> but you want to move around. Because then using your penis as a massage tool to awaken her, different positions will allow your penis to massage different areas. And the whole of inside of you, not just the G-spot or the clitoris, mm. is sacred space. Our yoni-verse. There's a whole yoni-verse in there, ladies. And one of the things that you will have the opportunity to experience if you join us for the weekend is allowing a partner to help you in this process of reclaiming the entirety of your universe, which includes your clitoris. And a lot of us have become addicted to our clitoral orgasms. Many of us are also having these sort of five second sneezes of an orgasm with our clitoris, or we're, we've rubbed it raw, we've used vibrators. Well, we get to invite someone to help us to reclaim not just our clitoris, not just the little pearl there, but the entire clitoral network. And then inside of us, this universe, the yoniverse, where there are so many things to be experienced. Some of those things are pleasure in terms of orgasms, erotic pleasure moving through our body. Some of those things are emotions, beatific emotions, just profound emotional experiences of self-love or being seen and witnessed by someone in a way that we never have before. But there are also these transcendental experiences that are some of my favorites where the meditative mind gets access. We actually can receive downloads, transmissions, visions. We can have memory come to us. And in those moments, the memory can actually be transformed. This uh, this practice is absolutely multidimensional. It goes way beyond what people think of with those three little letters, S-E-X. This is far beyond sex, and it's far beyond sexualizing even this part of our body. We reclaim it as a sacred space, as a holy temple, and we really feel the dignity and the divinity of ourselves as a goddess, as a representation of divine feminine in a body on this planet. And one of the first steps is learning how to surrender, to tune into our own breath, to focus on quiet our own mind and to allow someone to join us in this sacred experience. So Guy has asked me to talk about the seminar. I'm terrible at advertising mm -hmm. and promoting myself. Uh, singles and couples come to the course and we strive for a gender balance. Right now, we're three men shy of gender balance. So I'm making an offer to you right here of $200 off of the tuition if you're a single man and you want to come to the seminar. And you can't be signed up already. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, singles have a fabulous time. They meet members of the opposite sex that are also interested in this. I've had over 400 marriages in my, I don't know, 48 years of teaching Tantra seminars that resulted in people meeting on Saturday night homework where they're not getting together because they have a connection. They're getting together. The women choose the men on the Saturday night 
and the men learn from me in a two hour, three hour crash course, how to awaken the nerve endings that are gone asleep, how to awaken the consciousness and the space that is sacred. And in, instead of being a taker of that luscious yoni, you become a giver, a healer, a shaman, a high priest of tonight's not about me, it's about her. I wanna give to her a gift of my presence, of my love, and of new skills that are not rocket science. They're, it's not hard to learn how to stimulate the sacred spot masterfully. People get it. Saturday night, come back Sunday, and the stories will move you to tears mm -hmm. of the breakthroughs people have. Not because I'm attracted to that person, but because I'm committed one night to be a receiver or a giver and to let go into love, into energy, into pleasure, into just for you. Can you give that one night to a woman and put your penis on the shelf and I'm just here to give? I may feel arousal in giving, but I'm not going to do anything about it. I'm going to take that energy of my passion and bring it up to my heart. And from my heart, send it out my hands in a field of energy, in a circuit. And connect her down there with her brain and with her heart, with her throat chakra, she's going to make sounds. It's amazing the transformation that can happen in a weekend. And couples fall in love again. Even my 81-year-old brother and his 80-year-old <laughs> wife who came to the course last time, for a couple of weeks, they were back in love again. <laughs> <laughs> we want you to know that whether you're coming as a single person or as a couple, that you're going to be in a container that is very, very safe. So we will be doing some practices in class, but they're all going to be clothes on. There's going to be no nudity. You're not going to be required to do anything sexual in the group. And even in the Saturday night home play that we're going to invite you to do, um, couples, we're going to send you home or back to your room to do the practice together. And singles, we're going to invite you into a very specific selection process that as Charles says, it takes the ego out of it. It takes the calculations of who am I attracted to out of it. And it also gives you the opportunity at multiple times to really check in with yourself and see, is this right for me tonight? And I want the women to know that if you're brave enough to come as a single and you think you might wanna go into ex an experience, the only way that a man will get the chance to have his hands on you at all is if he has gone into his heart and asked himself, am I willing to serve any goddess who stands before me once I open my eyes? So this is not about the ego. This is not about attraction. And there is no obligation for you to engage in these practices, just a very strong invitation and a, a, a sacred container that gives you the chance to approach this um, feeling safe and taken care of. Before I take your questions, you've been typing in questions and we invite them. I want to give a summation about where we can go in lovemaking when it's a meditation. Mm. Two people working together to create connection and oneness without dependence. You're bringing this energy up to the brain. You're awakening. There's so many brain cells that are not activated yet. And you're awakening them. And you have a pleasure. You have arousal. And at the end, you feel connected. And that's what women want to feel, connected. If they feel connection, most of them are it's okay, I didn't have an orgasm. I feel so connected from our sharing. 
the quiet mind that you attain from these practices and the meditations, your mind, your sense of you, not the thinking you, but all of you, your mind, that quiet mind, can come down and live in your heart. And that feeling of living in your heart can last hours, days, months, many months. Ah. And there's no goal, but show up, be present, and practice. You get better at the practices. We don't expect you to be masterful at all the practices, but you'll learn so many things to do, both women and men, in lovemaking that you don't know now. That you add from now on, I won't just settle for simple sex. I won't settle for feeling used. I won't settle for a five second orgasm or even several of them. Mm -hmm. You just can't miss with bliss. And that's where you end up more blissful in your life. No matter what's going on out here in your world, you can be in your heart. Amidst the chaos, amidst rush hour in the subway trains, I had that experience for the first time in many years, I rode the subway. And there I was just happy and meditative and the screeching went on and I said, Christy, I used to always wear earplugs. <laughs> I learned to meditate on the subways going from Manhattan and Brooklyn when I went to college in Brooklyn and worked in Manhattan to the Bronx, the Yankee Stadium stop is where I got off and meditate amidst the sweatiness and the crushing and the unconsciousness. My guru said, that's the perfect place to learn to meditate because your efforts will be rewarded at other times. Why suffer by letting that take you out of your heart or letting any person take you out of your heart? As you do these practices, I'm speaking to singles now, you become more magnetic as you open your heart, as you open your mind, as you open your energy channels you become more attractive in a magnetic sense. And you start attracting better lovers in your life. If you're the type of person that always attracts the same kind of lover and I always get the losers and I choose wrong, that's your magnetism. You need a little healing from, from the past. You made it through, you did the hard work. Now let it go. And we do these practices in our classes that just help you. No, you don't have to be this. Experience this and make a choice to be open to love. Mm -hmm. Guy, do we have some questions? Well, so this Friday, we're going to be at the Beacon Hotel Beacon in Manhattan. Uh, so the, the course starts Friday evening and it goes through Sunday evening. Um, what else? What else do they need to know about that? Um, I'm sure that Guy will set, share some information and the link to register in the chat. And um, we're happy to take some questions for you. We really hope that you can make it to the weekend. If you can't, go to our YouTube channel. There are 108 YouTubes lasting between three and 10 minutes. Your own little private classes right there. You can really get a good education just off of YouTube. You can go to our website, sourcetantra.com, and get a whole bundle and batch of home study DVDs, CDs, downloads, book downloads. It's a great website. You can spend hours and hours and hours and not be done learning. All right, first question. I started by myself. I got, I was a yoga student. I was in school and the draft board was calling me in 1968. And uh, 
Swami Vishnu Devananda invited me to live at his ashram in Canada and avoid the draft. I was reading the Bhagavad Gita and I had to do right action. So I went into the army right from the ashram, right from living the life of yoga and peace in nature. It's like a convent for yogis into the army. First stop, Mississippi. Oh, four hours and I was traumatized. <laughs> what are you doing on my grass, boy? <laughs> and he didn't mean smoking it, he meant just standing on the grass. <laughs> mm. I sent away for a book and it arrived two days before I went into the army. It was the only book on Tantra, Tantra, the Yoga of Sex by Omar Garrison. And I took it with me to the army and I hid it so they didn't confiscate. They confiscate everything. They don't even want you to have a watch when you're going through basic training. Pay attention to the pictures of the snakes that surround you in this swamp called an army base. Be afraid. And I read that book and wow, this is really interesting. What a concept. And I learned what I told you about conserving your energy, using it, building up the energy, awakening consciousness. And there were solo practices, how to get the energy that's when you're 19, you're so fucking horny and so tight in your balls, no matter how many times you masturbate. How to get that energy and move it up to the upper chakras. 20 years later, I was at a Catholic monastery teaching monks how to move their energy. I also got to go behind the convent in teaching yoga to nuns. I was the only guy allowed there besides the priest, me. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't yet teaching Tantra, but I started with the principles of energy and my sexual energy and ejaculatory control that I could masturbate, but not have to go all the way to the end. I could stay with arousal and enjoy the feeling of my energy and breathe it up and get so close to coming and just hang out there right at the edge of the waterfall instead of going over into what becomes an addiction for men, the addiction to ejaculate. It's an addiction, all of the characteristics of addiction to have a choice because it's real sexy at the edge of a waterfall. You ever been at the edge of a waterfall? The air is fresher, the vision, the panorama is greater. To hang out on the edge of your orgasm where you can learn to have orgasm without ejaculating. Remember I told you in the five second orgasm, the first two seconds is just orgasm. And then from there it's orgasm with ejaculation and the loss of energy. So that's what I learned the master. And I practiced one time with a prostitute on my first army leave. I don't think I've heard that. <laughs> uh, confession of a true yoga. <laughs> and it felt strange to not ejaculate. I, what am I paying for? Well, it was fun. It was an experience. And I walked away just feeling the guys I had gone on leave with they were all tired and come out. And I just kind of looked at this is important. Can't wait till I'm out of the fucking army. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> back to my nice Jewish girlfriend <laughs> back in the Bronx. <laughs> That's how I started. <laughs> and I've never had sex the same way. And I've done the yoga practices, the Laya yoga, which is called white tantra, mm. which is a tantra that singles can do mm. to regenerate themselves, to enliven themselves, to master the techniques, to learn about their energy. So I was ready when women came into my life. 
And I was blessed to have a woman twice my age when I got back from the army. My yoga teacher seduced me. And she was wild. She had three different boyfriends. I was the young yogi boyfriend. And she had her opera boyfriend and her big black guy boyfriend. And that was my gateway. And she wanted to be made love to in every yoga position. I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> she was my first teacher. Mm. How beautiful for a young man to have an older woman mm. to teach me to slow down and enjoy the journey and to be present. Good question. Mm -hmm. There's another question from Nathan. What are the best dating concept self practices? Hmm. Quieting your mind and pleasuring yourself, deepening your relationship with yourself. Not just doing it the same old way you've done it since you were 13 or 14, but playing with your energy. Allowing yourself to feel the energy with your hand that's in your wand, to feel how sexy the Shiva Lingam is, the wand of God. To get close and practice the techniques to send the energy that wants to stream out your penis in orgasm with ejaculation and to send it back up. It's like as you pleasure yourself, you're planting the fields and then you take a pause period somewhere between I'm aroused to I'm very aroused till I've ejaculated to pause on the journey and do the techniques that reverse the draw of the energy towards ending and send it back up to the chakras from whence it comes. 300 million sperm takes one to create life with a woman partner. One sperm out of 300 million. That's overkill. <laughs> so to pause along the way, we teach the men three techniques to short circuit the energy. To say, whoa, or to press a certain spot that reverses the polarity of the energy so it's filling you up and learn to bathe in eight and nine on an arousal scale. I'm so excited, I want to ejaculate. I, if I just do this, I'll eject and hang out there. Become a master at hanging out there. Visit it several times in your pleasure session, at least once a week, but why not every day? <laughs> you know, I spent the last three years fighting systemic cancer where I had maybe six months to live. And I pleasured myself this way and I let Christy pleasure me. And you know, when your whole body is racked with pain and you're making out your last will and who gets what, sex isn't the first thing you think of, but there was love from her. And she said, I'm not gonna let you die. <laughs> You're going to beat this thing. And she loved me, whether I was hard or soft. Mm. And what I taught my men's students, I got to live. Hey, you got nerve endings in your soft on. Sometimes, oh, here comes arousal. I'm hard again. Oh, I remember this energy. But I forgot it for a while when your whole body's racked with pain. Mm -hmm. When you got a hole in your back that long and that wide that goes all the way to your spine from surgeries. She He's loved a miracle. Me. He's a miracle. She loved me back to wholeness. And that's what you want to get from your beloved, from your woman, someone that can love you. Because there's more than just satisfaction of the second chakra. Oh, to have satisfaction of your heart chakra and your mind and your second chakra. There's the meditative practice of Tantra yoga, the art of conscious loving. Did I answer that enough? I believe you did. We have another one. This one's a really good one. 
How can women increase their magnetic energy and why are conscious women so magnetic? Mm, that's a really great question. Well, you know, our our sexual energy is is different from men's in a lot of ways, but it's also similar in the sense that the more we bring our intention and our focus and our love into our energy, it changes the way that we vibrate. The more that we can run our pleasure through more parts of our body, get it up to our brain, get it into our heart, we actually start to sort of glow and emanate our Shakti. It changes the way that people see us. It changes the way that we feel as we move through the world. And so um, in this weekend, on Saturday, we're, as I'm guiding the women to prepare to go into the sacred spot ritual, which happens on Saturday night, we also talk about some solo practices that the women can do by themselves, ways to get in touch with their own body, their own energy. And as far as I'm concerned, I believe that the primary way that we start to transform our magnetism is by planting a seed of intention into our second chakra, into our sexual energy. And what we'll talk about this weekend a little bit is the practice of sex magic or transformational lovemaking. And what we want to do is instead of allowing this energy to sort of just be potential energy, we want to imprint it with something that we want to invite it to create in our lives. Uh, I like to start with something simple. So I shared on a talk that I gave recently that uh, in the year 2020, my sex magic intention for the whole year was the quality of goodness. Now, this wasn't a goodness that is a judgment between good and bad. It was like a sense of wholeness, a sense of holiness in my sexual energy. And so every time I touched my body or I joined in sexual union with my husband, who's my partner, um, I used my mind to imprint my body, my energy, my pleasure, my breath, my sound with this intention. In the year 2021, my intention was peace. I might be off by a year here. But so I like to start with something that I feel is sort of neutralizing the conditioning, neutralizing some of the, um, some of the feelings of, of chaos and confusion that can be embedded in our sexual energy. And once we start to smooth out and harmonize the energy by having a clear intention, it actually allows us to draw to us things that match more of what we want. So that's how I would answer that for now. And I'd say, if you want more detail, please come to the weekend. We'll talk about it on Saturday. It'll be fun. I want to talk about it for you guys. Have you ever been with a woman who's fully alive? a Shakti woman who's awakened her energy and her energy is easy to access. A little stroking, a little contact to the orgasm, ejaculation. How long have you got? That alive the woman could be. She's magnetized. You remember as a kid playing with magnets and iron? If you rub the magnet on the iron, the iron became magnetic. Well, those kind of women are magnetic. They own their energy. They're also not afraid to love. They don't live attachment. They don't live possessiveness. And they practice love. And they enjoy lovemaking. You all deserve that. That's the way God created it. So, of course, where do you meet? Tantra women, probably a Tantra course. <laughs> Especially because our graduates often come back to do the seminar a second time. And they've already started the awakening process. And they used to be normal. <laughs> <laughs> Who wants to be normal when it comes to the love and sex? It's pitiful. Mm. You deserve more. Mm. And you can have more. Mm -hmm. One more good question. What is the difference between Gnostic sexual alchemy, where one never orgasms and only has one sexual partner, or Tantra, 
And today's Buddha talks are all about sex positive and explode as many people at your heart's desire and have as many orgasms as possible. What are the pros and cons of each one? <laughs> Personal preference? <laughs> yeah, well, some of my best friends are monogamous. <laughs> it's a wonderful thing. It's it's simple. And your focus goes to that person. But you don't learn anything new unless you're able to quiet your mind and go into the experience of love that happens from love making. I'm a little low blood sugar. I lost my train of thought. Okay. <laughs> Would you bring me back to what I was sharing? Some of your best friends are monogamous. Okay. <laughs> so there's a path that says love only one person in your life. You've tried it. Maybe it's worked. Maybe it hasn't. If you run into women, guys, that have triggered you emotionally and you couldn't understand them and there was process, there'll be more of that if you try to love in polyamory. You'll double your pleasure, perhaps, but you'll double the process. So simple is nice. My brother and sister-in-law, they'll be celebrating 60 years of marriage, interracial couple. They haven't magnetized. They've only had one lover. I think my brother had an affair once in all of those years. Otherwise, monogamy. No. What's that? Does Barb know? Yes, okay. I was their counselor. <laughs> 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 and I don't think they've ever shared it with anyone else. Well, here you go. <laughs> Oops. If any of my nieces, nephews, or grandnephews are on... Scoozy. Scoozy. <laughs> <laughs> now, the question said something about the other path to have multiple partners and have as many orgasms as you can. That's not true in Tantra not in any writings, more practice, more lovemaking, mm -hmm. where the red tantra of sexual exchange is joined to the practice of white tantra, solo practices, the inner marriage, the inner relationship. Mm -hmm. If you orgasm all the time, I'm here to tell you from all of these years teaching an awful lot of men is the second chakra loses its charge. In my early years of teaching, I would, when I would introduce about men's sexual energy, I would say, how many of you men have never had a problem getting an erection or who have had an experience of being sexual and they couldn't get erect? And none of them would confess, maybe two or three of them. And the two or three, one of their wives went, oh, yes, you have. He was saying, I never have a problem. I'm from Canada. <laughs> they were French Canadians. And the wife said, bullshit. <laughs> you, and they we were wanting to process it right there with the class. Yes, it's good to love. It's good to love a lot. How much time in your relationship do you dedicate to lovemaking? Do you prioritize it? When can you both be together and you're not tired? Not one of you is horny and the other of you wants to go to sleep an hour ago. But to prioritize, to make time, we're going to go to our Tantra space. Make your Tantra space in your apartment if you got an extra bedroom. This is only for love. And let's practice the techniques of lovemaking. That doesn't mean lube me up and shove it in till you ejaculate. It means do the practices of love that transmit energy in love. I enumerated several of them at the beginning of the talk. There's so many things to do to pleasure and love your partner. 
let's do those and see where it takes us. Mm -hmm. On our website, we have four at-home classes, professionally made movies of leading you through a sequence of esoteric, esoteric foreplay, of ways to share energy that's arousal happens, but you don't have to take your clothes off. A great first date, dinner, and let's practice the Tantra. I'll put on volume one of the intimacy meditations. Mm -hmm. They're beautiful, beautifully produced. And he put in special effects that show the energy flow. So it inspires your mind to really tune into the subtleties. And there's actually one more subtlety that I wanted to address in response to that last question. Um, we didn't quite get to it when Charles was describing the five seconds of the male orgasm where you're going up in energy and then you ejaculate and you start to come down. Is that orgasm and ejaculation are actually two distinct events? Um, when it comes to men's sexual energy. And so when you're asking about orgasming as much as you can, I want to say you can have as many orgasms as you want. You can have all kinds of beautiful experiences of orgasmic energy moving through your body without ejaculating. And for women, we don't as much lose energy when we have waves of orgasm moving through us. So there might be a little bit of a misunderstanding embedded in that question when we're saying, oh, is it, are we just seeking orgasm over here? Well, when we learn how to use our breath, our mind, intention, body, and all of these skills to move energy, we're actually more likely to have energy experiences in the body that feel orgasmic, but that don't lead to the loss of our energy. So I want to encourage you to just consider that and rethink your question a little bit. When it comes to sexual energy, it could be simply stated that men need to learn about their energy, control it, and build it up and circulate it in their whole body to not always ejaculate into whatever, an old sock, a vagina, who knows where you ejaculate these days. But to build it up and keep it in you. That won't kill you a couple of nights with not ejaculating, especially if you're sharing sexual energy every day. It builds the magnetism in the couple. And for singles, there are such wonderful, safe practices that singles can do without getting into trouble, without mm -hmm. disease, without unwanted pregnancies, without big emotional attachments, mm -hmm. love, but don't be attached. Yeah. Be present on your journey to bliss. Be satisfied in the moment I'm feeling loved and aroused. I don't have to worry, am I gonna orgasm? I'm present with my partner, feeling loved, being pleasured. What's wrong with just being there? Yeah. And then you get tired or, I don't know, the kids come home from the movies. <laughs> okay, we're going to end our sharing right here. And it's fulfilling. You feel full in the moment when you're not chasing off, looking for the ending that you've become addicted to. Or we're told and sold the story of, that's the goal, making her come having her come, me coming, me having this kind of come. Could I got all sorts of types of orgasms. Enjoy the journey. Be here now in love. Oh, please. And love yourself. Check out Laya Yoga White Tantra. Mm -hmm. Those solo practices are so important mm -hmm. where you go into your body and you stretch. You put your body in a position of stretch and sacred geometry. You regulate your breathing. You focus on a chakra. You stimulate the chakra by visualizing yantras and feeling the energy flow. What is Hatha yoga today has been so watered down that it misses the yoga. The word means union. You with you. You with another in Tantra yoga. Mm. You got yeah. one more good one, or should we wrap? We got one more. Uh, I am attending the workshop 
from USC in March. What should we bring to the workshop? Do I need to bring a mat or a blanket? And what will be the setup of the room? Will we be in chairs or on the floor? Good question. It's your choice, chairs or floor chairs. Uh, makes no difference to us. We make a, a space. Uh, so you choose where you want to sit. You want to stand against the wall and watch. You can do that too. By now, if you've signed up, you should have gotten a confirmation from Guy that tells you the answer to all the questions, what you should bring, what the hours are, the, the things you're asking for rather than take time right now. Uh, read your confirmation, show up early. What time do we start, guys? Seven? Seven. Yeah, quarter to seven. Get there a little early. Uh, do we have COVID tests? Or policy? I think they're bringing a home test. Or they're sending you a picture? They're bringing it in. We want to make sure we start the seminar COVID free. Uh, just about every seminar, people take the test at home, and we always get one or two couples or singles that discover they have COVID and they could transmit it. So we invite them to come back another time or refund their money. And we've never had anyone get sick at our seminar or after our seminar. So we have a good policy, we feel. Yeah. All right. Well, we would love to invite you all to uh, put into the chat something that you loved or learned or enjoyed as a way to uh, share with Charlotte and Christy uh, our gratitude for them being here. So go ahead and type that into the chat and I'll share that with them. I love reading those things. And I love looking at your faces as I shared with you and seeing some of you like get things and some of you astounded and some of you uh, <laughs> believe in this energy shit. Yeah. You come to the course, you'll feel energy. Try not believe in it after you feel it, after it penetrates you from another or flows through you. Thank you so much for sharing yourselves on this great call. Have a beautiful evening. Thank mm -hmm. you. Thank you. Great chat. Thank you. Thank you so much. This entire session has lit up the fire in my heart. Aww. Exactly what I desire with another room. We get such good men at our weekends. Mm -hmm. Guys that want to be conscious lovers. Well, mm -hmm. That's a good start. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.